Hey, are you gonna help? Hey, are you gonna help? You guys aren't gonna help today. You're not helping today. Hey, you're... <laughs> you guys are cute. On Manitoulin Island, we're gonna do some pig butchering today. Two pigs. Two pigs, two dog helpers. They're not helping today. They're cute. Hey, you guys are cute. This one is a Burmese mountain dog, and this one is a Swiss mountain dog, we think. Hey? And they're both cute. Hey? All right, so we're gonna scald these pigs. I haven't done this before, but a big scalding uh, pot, I guess you'd say. So we've got it set up on cinder blocks. We're just gonna get a fire started on in there, fill it up with water, and then we can, once it's heating, we can work on some other things. I get this guy rocking and then we'll set up a windbreak, eh? Yeah. We're um, back at the vineyard. So obviously Nick's here and he's doing a lot of the work, but he's a bit camera shy. So he said, film whatever you want, but not me. So that's what we're gonna do. So you're picking up a tractor, eh? Yeah. That'll make it easy to uh, yeah. voice these guys in here. I'll show you what I picked up though. I stopped at Princess Auto on the way here, right? Because there's one in Sudbury. Yeah. I've never been in before. Uh, and I didn't really budget enough time for the amount of cool stuff that was in there. But, um, see, I bought one of these. A DC. Oh, the winch? Yeah, the winch. Because I thought we might be able to... Um, it's a, it runs on a battery, which is kind of nice. Although I'll probably set it up in my parents' shop for hanging gear and stuff. The other thing I got... Have you used these heated buckets before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I watched a video where a guy puts nipple water yeah. in there and then you've got uh, unfrozen water all year. So I'm gonna set that up for our chickens. I have one of these, um, same company. It's already got the nipples in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And it's got a lid. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a lid for this to keep them out of it, but yeah. um, that'll be better than what we're using now, so. Um, how much was this? Uh, I'd have to look at my receipt. I think it was nineteen dollars. Yeah, see, mine was Does that sixty. Sound about right. Oh, okay. But it's nice. It's yeah. got a lid. It's got four watering nipples around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lid is amazing because water doesn't get dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a big difference. Yeah, I might just um, maybe I'll cut a little piece of uh, foam to fit and then glue it onto a piece of um, plywood, plywood or something, yeah. so it just sets there. Yeah. Anyway, that'll be. Uh, a project in a couple weeks. Yeah, I, I, I went to heated water uh, last year. Oh yeah. In the barn. Nick did a lot of research uh, ahead of time, obviously, which is important. And one of the things he read was about um, giving the pig some alcohol uh, before you do the deed, which um, there's a few studies to back that up for meat quality and for the ease of dispatch and so on so I think uh, I never did that before but that that worked I would say that was good so we're just gonna wash this pig um, like a, a starting wash and then um, then do the scalding so we got the water at 148 we did a minute and 30 seconds scald look at how nice that's coming off hey eh? Wow yeah, I never scalded a pig, but I think it's worth setting up the system for it. That looks good. So we just did the back half first, get it all scraped down, and then we'll flip the pig over, dunk the first half. My next doing all the work here, so I'm just gonna shut her down, we'll help out, we'll be back. Good to know. So we missed, some of the spots didn't really work out that great from the dunk. So we're gonna finish up with a tiger torch, which is just not as clean. Oh yeah. A little more. A little bit more than that. Yeah, it's not bad for our first one. There's a little bit more epidermis on it maybe than we want, but we might do better on the next one. That's my first time scalding a pig. Um, I did it, uh, 
a different kind of a scald one time with a Romanian fellow and they have a whole system where they wrap the pig in blankets and then they pour the scalding water on it and they let it sit. Like when you go to a barber and you get a shave, they leave the hot cloths on you. So instead of bringing a whole 45 gallon drum up to temperature, they're just using like a five gallon pail. So it's uh, a lot more efficient on water. It just takes a little bit longer maybe, but you can do it without a tractor. So there's all these trade-offs, but um, this one's looking pretty good. It might just need a little wash, eh? And then we'll move on to the second pig, the bigger one. We got the scalder figured out. We had to dip it about three times because um, that first minute and a half, like there were patches that were pretty good, but overall it needed more scalding. And then we flipped the pig upside down and we did the other half of it. Connection, connection to food. That's what this is all about. One pig in halves, skin on. The skin's wrinkling up there in the cold. All the organ meats. So we're gonna move on to pig number two. It's a lot of work, um, but it's also very rewarding. Nick's been raising these pigs up all summer and get to eat them all winter. Pastured, pastured, well-loved pigs. There's a way to uh, make some proper cuts so you can hook the gambrels in behind the tendons right close to the wrist. We hit like the perfect scald on that one so it's working real nice. You can see the epidermis is coming off most of the time and then all the hair. So this one's going better and faster than the first one, but that's good. We're learning each time. So these guys are gonna get, um, well, they're gonna get split. Uh, and then we're gonna cool them overnight in the shop and we're gonna do all of our cutting tomorrow. Perfect. Working by the light of the O-Lantern. Got our second pig done, cut in half. Now we just have to load them in the truck in the dark. By the light of the blue moon, the full moon, on Halloween, the, what is it? It's the first time that there has been a full blue moon on Halloween since 1944. So here's what happened last night. Uh, we had an amazing supper. Had a couple drinks and we were literally minutes away from bedtime we had all the pork parked in the garage here nick went outside to run the dogs and the dogs ran a skunk into the garage and it sprayed um so we had to deal with the skunk we had to deal with the dogs we ended up hustling the truck out into another outbuilding because we weren't sure what got sprayed but we think that all the meat's good. Anyway, it's the next morning and we're gonna start to cut it all up. And I'll show you a little bit of that process too, but mostly what I wanted to say is that um, cutting up meat's not rocket science. You've seen me do it before. Uh, you can follow a book. Nick's been doing a lot of research on, uh, on the YouTubes and online and um, you know, anybody can tackle this with a couple of kitchen knives and, um, and kind of Put away their own meat. Sorry, skunk. <laughs> this is like my go-to book. Basic butchering of livestock and game. This is a classic. Um, and I just haven't opened up to the big chapter, but uh, you know, it's, it basically walks you through all, all of your cuts step by step. Um, it's also got lamb, beef, venison, uh, and I forget what else, but um, anyway, I highly recommend that book. Oh, it says right on the front. Beef, veal, pork, lamb, poultry, rabbit, and venison. There you go, everything you need. And if you wanna get into the weeds a little bit, this trifecta here by Jennifer McLagan, that's a Canadian author. Odd bits, how to cook the rest of the animal, uh, how to use bones, a whole book about fat. These are um, these are great reading for anybody who likes to make the most of their critters.
Yeah, that knife is wicked sharp, eh? It is. That's handy. And wicked big, too. So, we're actually deviating from the book a bit because my book's got a lot of, like, cut a straight line here with the saw. Um, but Nick's been doing a lot of research where they basically take the whole thing apart with minimal saw cuts. So right now we're doing... Oh, look at that marbling. Um, oops. That didn't work. Um, we're doing more knife work to take the shoulder off. All right, I've got most of our big cuts done. The feet... Just wrapping up some hawks. We've got the ham. This is a picnic, you said? Yeah. Spare ribs, brisket for sausage. Butt. The shoulder. Oh, the Boston butt. Yeah. And then we're going to cut the loin from the ribs here, separate the bacon, get the spare ribs. So that's all coming along nice. We're a little bit short on freezer space, but... This is where this little unit is gold. So uh, you might've seen this in an earlier video. This is a car freezer refrigerator by Comdu. And right now it's plugged into the wall, AC power. And I got it while well, it's going down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So it works as a freezer. And then I can bring it in my car, plug it into the 12 volt and keep it all frozen on the way home. Cause I got a three and a half hour drive or something. Look at that beautiful pile of pork chops. Loin roast. Maybe I'll take one more chop off of there. And then Nick's uh, going to be adventurous. He's going to do a sea salt prosciutto with this whole ham while the tail's coming off. And we're going to cut out around the H bone here, find the hip joint, clean it all up nice. Okay, I cut all around that H bone and the hip and I exposed the hip bone on the femur and now well, we've also cut off the bottom of the hawk so we're going to leave there we're going to punch a hole so we can hang it after it's done its whole salt bath so i did a video before from uh, the salt cured pig in ontario gathering we had a couple of um really great butchers and charcuterie guys and so my recollection and Nick's research watching videos is that we want to cut a nice smooth cut around expose the end of that hip bone we don't want to leave any big cracks or folds of meat where bacteria are going to hang out so our next step is just to do a smooth cut around there and then it should be ready for the prosciutto I guess I should talk about some of our indispensable equipment eh Meat saw, very, very handy, although I've definitely done a lot of butchering with no saw at all. Boneless stuff. My uh, Groman Trouton Bird, Nick's got a Trouton Bird knife. We've used those a fair bit, but really handy knives for some of these big cuts are some good um, boning knives with nice long slicing blades. This is actually an Ontario Knife Company knife and Nick brought it to his friend and he has gotten it razor sharp. He's got a fancy sharpening machine, so that's awesome. Uh, cleaver, I don't use one too much, but Nick was watching a lot of cleaver work on the videos and we used it a few times. That's handy as well. A bunch of food grade buckets or stainless steel bowls. So we've got all of our sausage bits in one. This is the leaf lard that Nick's gonna use to coat his uh, prosciutto when he's salting it. And we put all the Skin in another one. Is that for dog treats? All the skin? Yeah. Another Groman, the Russell Belt knife. Good book. Also very handy. And I did a few touch-ups on the work sharp, so that was handy as well. Sorry, can't can't get out of my shadow here. There, there we are. Touch-ups on the work sharp. Well, you need a big freezer too for all the meats. It's better there. Yeah, it looks really good right now. It's got like nice even cuts. Pack a little bit of salt into those two crevices and around the bone. That'd be nice. People have to check back in in a year to see how it works. <laughs> and just for our own notes, this uh, is 26.6 pounds of ham 
going into prosciutto. There's a bit of salt in there. All right. That's gonna be hard to get salt into. I better make that a little bigger. Do you want to put a piece of cord in there to start? Nah. I'll get it. It's on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> But that was the one guy who buried it, so yeah. if I'm turning it, and then you're never gonna have a side and salt free up against the pump. That's right, yeah. So this is just refined sea salt that I picked up at a bulk food store. And that's what you're watching, eh? You guys are just doing it with sea salt? Yeah. Well, not everyone uses sea salt. No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, that's right, because people use prog powder and other stuff. Well, the cheap ones are table sea, or the table, you know, like the yeah, yeah, the mines, just like the mines salt, salt or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So you're just making sure there's lots of salt in that hanging hole, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna do the same thing around the uh, emer. Oh yeah. Bag it. Ta I was never brave enough to do this myself, but I brought a couple of hams to the chefs at the college where I work. They have a nice curing chamber, humidity, temperature controlled, and uh, they did a uh, nice, two nice prosciuttos. This, uh, this salt definitely has a different texture to it. Texture yeah. to it, yeah. Is it flakier? It's, uh, Hard to, hard to describe. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. It's that magnesium carbonate. Eh? Maybe. I have felt something like it before, but it's not coming to me what that was. Every other day, you'll just like rotate yeah. it and then add a bit of salt and. Yeah. I can't get it to stick to that at all. Yeah. It is definitely, uh, like it doesn't stick to things, eh? Oh, it's like, like it's a really dry feeling? Yeah, feel it, yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's kind of like, um, the grains are larger than table salt. Uh, yeah, I don't know really how to describe that. And it's dry. Yeah, really it's dry. dry feel to it. But that's, but it, that it's designed thing. for anti-caking, right? So yeah. it doesn't take on water as easily, which yeah. means... Maybe. Yeah, it's got magnesium carbonate. So this sea salt that I picked up, which was when it was available, is like a refined sea salt with magnesium carbonate enrichment as an anti-caking agent, but it should still work. I hope so. It's a time thing, right? But if it's all about time. Um, so it's... So Nick decided to... Oh, it is very... That's okay. Just to bury it. There we go. Done. <laughs> Done. And then, so every couple of days, you'll just like sift it around, make sure there's salt on all edges, and maybe not because look at that. Because you want to get some. Well, yeah. Is there some between the bone? I, I packed oh, yeah. it already. Yeah, over yeah. There. Okay. Perfect. And then a year from now, you'll be like, "Where's my, where's my nice Rubbermaid tin?" And then you'll come and you'll be like, "What's in here? <gasps> oh, I know." <laughs> that beautifully aged prosciutto except how long do you leave it in the salt before you hang it do you uh, what is it it's like a day and a half per pound okay and then but then then you take it out of the salt rinse the salt off completely with water yeah dry it yeah and then that's when you Let put on the, the leaf it. fat with oh, some okay. black pepper nice yeah. or you can use other peppers but I'd probably use black pepper so we, I'm wrapping up here. Um, the second pig, Nick wants to kind of work on it over a couple of days, and um, so it's hanging up in the cool, in the actually in the shed behind me there. And uh, we kind of spent the morning rounding up all of his chickens. If you watched my earlier video, you know that he's running them through the vineyard in um, little uh, pasture coops. So they moved up to his barn, and uh, time for me to hit the road. So, so long, puppies. See you on the next one.
Eh? You little skunk stinks. See you on the next one. Actually, one of the upcoming next ones will be I'll be back here for a deer hunt. So my rifle season open today. I'm gonna be hunting around North Bay, Zone 41. And then uh, after mine closes, it opens up on Manitoulin Island. So I'll be back uh, for more adventures here and still trying to work in some trips down south at the small cabin with Chris. Um, before the snow flies, it's always a little later down there than up here. So try and squeeze that in before Christmas as well.